Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you're interested in following up with me personally, please contact me at janineberelts.com. Practicing acceptance and gratitude in the use of the will. Roberto Assagioli was the founding psychologist of a movement called Psychosynthesis. And his quote is, the will is not merely assertive, aggressive and controlling. There is the accepting will, yielding will, the dedicated will. You might say that there is a feminine polarity to the will, the willing surrender, the joyful acceptance of the other functions of the personality. Acceptance is often seen as a passive, giving in, don't care type of stance. But acceptance has a currency of will in it, a currency of decision in it. And when we first encounter an unpleasant event. Maybe, of course, we yield to self-pity, evasion, anger, rebellion, passivity, woundedness, or in a sporting, humorous way, we may apply sarcasm. However, we can choose, utilizing this will energy, to assume a positive, dynamic attitude of acceptance. In this frame of thinking, acceptance is not passive, but is a decision, a choice. This may assist us in understanding what is unexpectedly coming our way, learning from its message, thereby taking advantage of the hidden circumstances it may provide and offer us. Seeing our life through glasses of its mystery. If we decide so, fight effectively in any case, we will be able to take responsibility for whatever choice we have and make, through our actions, through our thoughts and through our feelings. Instead of simply blaming everything on the other person or the outside world, because by blaming we give away our power, we say the other person needs to take action, change, etc. So we are still dependent on the other person helping us to resolve. Instead we can work within ourselves. As an Indian saying goes, if you don't want your feet to be hurt by thorns, you can try to carpet the whole earth or you can buy a pair of sandals. We are free to choose any or several of of these attitudes. These choices may have unavoidable effects for which we are fully responsible, but it may also bring us unexpected gifts of new understandings, of an understanding of a deeper rhythm of our life. Here is a little practice run with acceptance. Taking a few deep breaths and relax as you exhale, allowing a wave of calming energy to flow over your body, over your thoughts and over your feelings. Ponder and think of something in your life for which you feel or have felt grateful. can be the presence of a person you love, a talent you have, a sense of physical well-being, the beauty of a tree or a rose, or an unexpected moment of peace and serenity. Imagine it vividly, using all your senses to appreciate it. Think of what it gives you and what you can learn from it. Now taking a deep breath again. Think of something or somebody which you would like to avoid in your life. A 
Imagine it in detail. Watch closely any reactions which arise in you. Watch them as they emerge without trying to stop them or control them. Feel it in your body. Hear it in your head. And watch your thoughts. Observe your habitual strategy of non-acceptance. Be aware of it, how it works at the level of your body, your feelings and your thoughts. I don't like this. Now suppose that life is guiding you by communicating with you in a code of language made up of situations and events. And ask yourself, what is the message here in this perceived neg negative situation? Write down any ideas that come to you as you reflect on this question. Taking your time. stance of non-acceptance and what it may reveal to you. Take your time to note it down. Now please return to whatever it was you felt grateful for. Imagine once more, think of it with appreciation and be as fully aware as you can of this feeling of acceptance this time. And again, switch back to the unpleasant situation, bringing into this now your accepting attitude which you have aroused. Acknowledge the temporary inevitability of this unpleasant situation. Realize that the same universe which produced what was pleasant also produced the unpleasant. And assume, if you feel ready and are willing to, an attitude of conscious, deliberate acceptance. Acceptance leads to the action of surrender. Really authentic and full acceptance gives up all comparisons, all expectations and all manipulations. At the core we find gratefulness for the fundamental all rightness of the universe. And here is a little practice for gratitude. You can do this with a friend or as a couple. Ask each other, what have you enjoyed most about today? And the second question, what had, has, has had most meaning for you today? Third question, what do you feel gratitude for? And this question of gratitude needs to be a fresh experience daily. If you do it as a daily practice, it can be small, but it should be void of generalization, such as I have a roof over my head or I can breathe as specific as possible is the best way. This is frequently used in trauma release as well, just creating a new pathway in the brain to avoid this repetitive, catastrophizing or negative thinking that we are sometimes prone to after trauma. And then the fourth question is, as you look at each other, what do you feel thankful for to me? It may be useful when we continue to 
explore the topic of acceptance to look at self-confidence and self-identification as it's spoken of in psychosynthesis. Often we find it hard to accept others because we do not deeply accept ourselves. And that is the reason why working on this topic of acceptance is ultimately for the transformation of self. And as you know, in common conversation, many people speak about lack of self-esteem or self-confidence. And there are a myriad of possibilities and courses to enhance this self-confidence and self-esteem. So this illustrates how central this theme is for everyone. Adjacent to this is the question, who am I? Who am I really? Am I my body? Clearly you are more than your body because you can observe, adjust, or strengthen your body. Am I my feelings? Again, you are more than your feelings because you can calm your feelings or you can rationalize strong impulses or feelings. Am I my thoughts? Surely you're more than your thoughts because you can go back in time, visit the past and project thoughts into the future. You can use the affirmation, I am the center of pure self-awareness. Observing, directing, and using my will to transform my life. This affirmation shows that we are a work in progress, utilizing our will and seeing the possibility of changing, improving and transforming our life. We can see many identification identifications of the so-called self, the I. Having just traveled around the world, it struck me that in different parts of the world, self-confidence and identification with self is based on different ingredients. In some parts of the world, it's an identification with the wealth that people have that gives them status and honor. In other part, it's the intellect, the academic performance or status. In yet other parts, it may be strengths, physical strength, athletes, ballerinas, all these people identify strongly with their body and the strength it may house. In yet other parts of the world it may be the family of origin, being able to go back in time, crediting themselves with their genealogy as being a Persian prince or anything of that kind. Fame and fortune, perhaps, in the entertainment world artistic abilities, or, in some of the ancient cultures, spirituality and rituals. So as you can see, there are many and a great variety of collective or individual identification with self or self-awareness. Are they really a reflection of the deeper self? When a crisis arises, and because I have worked in palliative care so often, I've seen this in cancer timing. 
the diagnosis of cancer, the as, as, assessment of ill health, a relationship breakdown, money problems, betrayal, rejection in a relationship, infidelity. It occurs in all our lives and it's at those times of crisis that we realize that those identifications with wealth, intellect, strength, family, fame or fortune have their limitations and further on often need to be reprioritized. This illustrates clearly that we are not those identification and we can ask who is the one that can observe and question and, and tell the story. In psychology we know about the Joe Harry win window Joe Left and Harry Ingram in 2009, they state that we have four parts to ourselves, a public self, the one known to self and others, a blind self, known to others but not to self. I'm partial to that story of the emperor without clothes. And at times when we discover new aspects to ourselves, it's almost embarrassing to think that other people have already seen something that we haven't known ourselves. So that's the blind self. Then there's the private self, known only to self but not to others. And the fourth, the unknown self, unknown to self and others. That part leaves possibilities of exploration. In group situations, those windows, the public, blind, private and unknown self can become activated because colleagues or friends and family project onto ideas, feelings, anecdotes, history or all other so-called truth. Some of those will upset or hurt us. Others make us feel recognized and validated. Also in groups or couples, we want to know the other person because knowing them intimately gives us a specialness, gives us protection too. Good secrets and bad secrets can occur in those situations and often they rock us to the core. Of course, in relationships with intimate partners, it's important to be honest, trusting and revealing as that becomes the specialness. This specialness gives us protection of perhaps loyalty and monogamy. Even if it's a vulnerable, fragile place that occurs after revealing and opening up and trusting, this vulnerability is often a glue to a relationship. Many of these things help to build onto a longevity that can occur in a relationship. To allow us to get a bit deeper into this identification with self, there's a very soothing little meditation or visualization that can really help with understanding our deeper self, our intuition, or provide a moment in the oasis of calm and rest. It's called the Golden Heart Meditation. So prepare calmly for this experience. 
by reassuring that this time is your own. And focus your eyes on a candle or an aesthetic special thing that you like to focus on or close your eyes. Taking a slow breath Ponder on what others think of you, positively or negatively. Remember some of the compliments that you regularly get or other feedback that you may have received in recent times. Also, Ponder on what you perceive to be your strength, your unique qualities or weaknesses. And hold this identification of this smorgasbord of positive, negative qualities or difficulties as an observation of the identification of yourself at this point in time. Taking a deep slow breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. Gently sitting up straight, your neck in alignment. This neck supports your head. That's on average 14 kilograms in weight. It supports and balances your head. Feel your spine in alignment and rest your feet on the floor. Feel supported by the earth. And take this time as your own. No need to do anything or go anywhere. Calm now. Relax your forehead, your eyes and your eyebrow. Take a few slow breaths. Inhale through your nose and breathe out through your mouth letting go of tension in your jaws, your shoulders, back or any other place in your body. And tune into the rising and falling of your chest and abdomen and notice the unique rhythm of your breathing. Now visualize your heart, your deeper heart center or your spiritual heart. It may help to put your left hand physically on that place where you feel your heart is beating its special rhythm. Picture it in a shining golden color. Sense the heart energy there. See it as the love, the warmth, and even the acceptance in that golden heart of yours. Now see a beautiful door, a door exactly in the center of your heart and see it opening slowly. Imagine yourself entering into that space of your heart center. Precisely in the middle of your heart is a beautifully 
decorated soft seat. Gently rest there for a moment. You may use this time to ask a question to be answered by the inner voice. In this way, becoming more attuned to the communication with your deeper self, your heart. And develop trust in your intuition. It will often become stronger the more you utilize this form of checking in with self. Imagine now next to you, on the seat, your higher self, your deeper being. God to some, Atma to others, soul, the universe, nature. Whatever you picture, that elevated part of you, to sit next to you. Inhale now with certainty and decision that you are no different from that collective higher aspect and resolve with self-confidence and self-satisfaction, contentment and self-sacrifice. that you want to be connected to this deeper self and that you regularly like to have a session, an encounter with that beautiful golden heart center. Gently enjoy the deeper self experience for a moment. Finishing now with a deep, long in and out breath. Hold to the knowledge that you are in the light. The light is in you, that you are the light. Love this podcast? Support it and become a sponsor. Head to oscastnetwork.com.